Hello and welcome to part 16 where we finally finished the base shopping cart by allowing quantity adjustments for the user before checkout. So what we're going to do is go into this quantity box and we're going to put a form tag and inside that form tag it's going to have an input text field and then that will allow them to change it by giving them an input text field where that number is inserted by default dynamically. Then right next to that input text field you have a little button that says change. Now some of you may opt to use JavaScript and in JavaScript what you can do is use the on change event of that input text field. So when you put an input text field there with a form you can have an on change event for that text field that way right when they change the number in it it will perform a JavaScript function and you can do whatever you want from that point but I'm not going to be showing that in this lesson series. We're going to stick to raw PHP and MySQL. I know how to use jQuery, I know how to use JavaScript pretty well but I'm not going to be going into it because it's really just more about user interface. What I'm showing is more about the back-end programming. Alright, so let's go into cart.php, into section 4, render the cart for the user to view on page, expand that code. Down here, let's go into the dynamic table row assembly. For now, we'll just comment that out. We'll copy it. Put a line break there. And pop it back into place. For now, let's just remove that. And we're going to copy this form here that we have already established for the user to delete the item from the cart. So let's copy that and put it into this new table cell we have here. We're going to change some things up. We're going to leave the form action to cart.php, the method to post. The input name for the button could be adjust button. It'll have a unique name for that button. And remember, that's just the input button. So you don't really have to worry too much about what the name is on that. And the value can be anything you want. I'm just going to put the word change. So that's my little button. And here I can actually put a line break on these so you can see it better. So there's the form tag, the opening form tag. And here's the first input, which is a button. Here's a hidden input field, which we're going to need that. And there's the closing form tag with the closing TD tag. So this hidden field, we need this. We gotta make sure it's item ID instead of the I, the index variable. So let's just change that index variable to item ID and let's rename this item to adjust. You can name it whatever you want. It makes most sense to you item to adjust quantity or what, whatever you want to name it. I'm just going to put item to adjust and that's the variable I'll pick up to know which item in the cart is the one to be adjusted. Now you need one more field and you want to put it in front of your button so let's go above the button and place in a text field. You can go, if, if you're in Dreamweaver you can go up top to the forms tab click text field there and the name of it will be I guess quantity. The value, let's just put the triple X for now. Size, I'm just gonna put one. Max length, two. Because you know if you want to let them buy nine hundred and ninety nine pieces of one particular item, you can make this a three. If you want to only allow them to buy ninety nine of one particular item, you make this a two. If you only want to allow them to buy up to nine of one particular item, make this a 1. No, I'll make it a 2. That way they can buy up to 99 of one particular item, but no more than that. I'll press OK. And this value, the triple X there, you're going to change that to be this each item quantity variable that we commented out. Right there. So now you have everything you need to be posted to a little PHP block we're going to add up top. Like we've been adding all those other PHP blocks to handle the programming. We'll add one more and it's going to be looking for this variable of item to adjust, this hidden variable of item to adjust. And we'll also be able to access the quantity variable. That way we can adjust the quantity for that item in the array. We're going to go and write some PHP up top. Let's take this variable, item to adjust, maybe put it in a notepad file somewhere or something. It's where you don't lose or if you have a good memory just hold it in your head. I'm going to throw it in the notepad file. 
both of those variables. That way I know exactly what I'm looking for so I can scoop it up. Now I'm going to collapse section 4. And I'm going to have a new PHP block up top here. So let's see which one of these is real small. I think section 2 is nice and small there. So I'm going to copy that whole section 2, just the PHP block from section 2. And right under section 2, I'm going to pop it in again, the copied version of section 2. I'm going to name it section 3. The one that was section 3 is going to become section 4. Section 4 is going to become section 5. Now section 5 is render the card to the user to view on the page. Don't let me lose you. You saw what I just did. I just changed the numbers a little bit. So section 3 is the new one. So let's change what this says here. If user chooses to adjust item quantity. Now you go in here, expand that, change this code. You can just remove that altogether. Now you have a little if condition nest. And we're just going to change this to post because we're looking for a posted variable. Change this to post as well. And the variable we're looking for is item to adjust. So let's change this to that. Now let me explain this line real quick. If is set the posted variable item to adjust and post item to adjust is not equal to nothing. That means it has to have a value. So it has to be set and it has to have a value in order for us to execute some code. Dork. I'm a dork. Now, we already learned in this lesson series how to adjust the quantity for a specific item in the cart. So really some of you guys could have had this already banged out without me, I know, if your logic is good. So I'm going to go into section 1 and I'm going to copy this for each loop because look here, in this for each loop we have this little code comment. It says that item is in cart already, so let's adjust its quantity using array splice. So I'm going to grab that whole for each loop. Make sure you grab the whole for each loop with the while loop inside of it. Press control C and then you can collapse section 1 back up. Go back into section 3 and put that for each loop right there. Make sure this bottom bracket matches. There we go. That looks good to me. So all we have to do is go in here and change this splice line just a little bit. And that's all we have to do really. So right here above the for each loop we have to access this posted variable whatever the value of it is. So let's make a local PHP variable called item to adjust. Keep it simple. Keep it simple stupid. And then that'll be equal to the posted variable of item to adjust. We're also going to gather one more variable. So let's just copy that line. Pop it in right there. I'm going to name this one quantity. Because remember we have two variables being posted when this item ID to adjust variable is going to be set. We'll have two, two variables that we can access. The item to adjust and the quantity that they want to adjust to for that card item. So let's just name this quantity and we're going to get gather the posted variable of quantity from the little form. So within the for each loop we can place that in the array splice function. But we have to make sure first we get the right item. So we have to gather we need an i variable. So right above the for each loop let's put the i equal to so let's make that zero. So this should still target the correct we're going to check it out. I might have to alter that a little bit, but I think this will target the correct associative array within your multi-dimensional array for that item. So let's see. Instead of PID here, we simply change that to item to adjust. So within the for each loop, doing the same things we did in section one. So I'm not going to recover the same. I'm not going to re-explain all this code. Just change PID to item to adjust was found, you don't need that variable. All we need is the splice function there within this if condition. And I already explained this if condition when we created section 1 of the code. So I'm not going to explain what this is all over again. I'm not going to explain array splice all over again because I already did it. All I'm going to tell you is quantity inside of your associative array where we're going to use array splice to adjust it 
instead of each item quantity plus one, we can just make this the dynamic variable of quantity. It's very simple. So take that each item quantity plus one and change it to quantity. And then you just continue the you just continue to let the page load and the cart will render correctly with these new adjustments. So let's make sure everything's cool. Oh, see this PID? I didn't change it right there. So let's change that PID to item to adjust. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm going to test it all out. Let's add the black hat. Hello, black hat. Let's add the black jeans. Hello, black jeans. Let's add the purple shirt. All right. Now I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to change the quantity for the purple shirt to 3. Change. You can see now it says 3. The page already reloaded in a split second. Nobody can even notice it reloading almost. And now the value is total is 30. Cart total is 50. So if I change the black hat, I want 4 of those. Change. See? And it happens so fast, you almost can't even notice the page has reloaded. All totals are different now. So I think that's pretty efficient. But as you can see, man, this is lightning quick. I'm going to add 48 of these. See? 480 bucks. Cart total is perfect. Let's remove that item now. Look, everything's working great, huh? 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 Okay, so uh, let's see where we're at. Let's close this code up, collapse it, and now we have five sections of PHP block. Very simple. And the cart is pretty much complete. All we have to do now is discuss PayPal and its IPN programming. So in the next video, I'm going to talk all about PayPal being a PayPal merchant, what kind of account you need, how to get the IPN script going on your, set, on your account, the cart variables, all the things we need to send to PayPal to let them know all the item, the quantity, and things like that. So stay tuned for part 70. We're almost done. We're very, very close now. It's so close I can smell the finish line.